April 26, 1986. A routine safety test at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant goes catastrophically wrong. Reactor number 4 explodes, sending a radioactive cloud across Europe. 400 times more radiation than Hiroshima. Millions of lives changed forever. But how could a simple test unleash this nightmare? This wasn't just an accident. It was a dangerous combination of human error, engineering flaws, and a system built on secrecy. In the early hours of April 26th, operators ran a standard turbine safety test. Moments later, disaster struck. How could a single test turn a controlled experiment into a global catastrophe? What lessons did the world learn from Chernobyl that still echo through nuclear safety today? But before we dive in, kindly like and subscribe to this channel for more thrilling videos. Chernobyl was a symbol of Soviet ambition and technological pride. The nearby city of Pripyat stood out with modern high-rise apartments, parks, schools, and all the amenities meant to reflect the USSR's progress. It was built to house the plant workers and their families, promising a life of comfort and optimism. The RBMK-1000 reactor at the heart of the plant was touted as a marvel, powerful, efficient, and capable of providing virtually unlimited energy. On the surface, everything seemed bright, orderly and forward-looking. Behind the surface, the reactor had serious and dangerous design problems. Unlike Western reactors, it didn't have a strong concrete building to contain radiation if something went wrong. The way it was built made it unstable. At low power, steam bubbles could actually make the reaction grow instead of slowing it down. This made the reactor very risky in certain situations. These design flaws, along with the Soviet push to save money and look successful, turned what should have been a safe power source into a ticking time bomb. Warnings had been issued by engineers familiar with these flaws. They knew about the potential dangers of the control rods and the unstable reactor physics. Yet, in the Soviet system, voicing concern was dangerous and often discouraged. Operators were never fully informed that activating the emergency shutdown in specific conditions could itself trigger a catastrophic reaction. These hidden flaws, ignored warnings, and a culture of secrecy set the stage for one of history's worst technological disasters. But here's the ick. How could speaking up to power get you castigated? Maybe the Soviet government weren't all that, truly. On the evening of April 25th, 1986, the crew of reactor number 4 began preparations for a routine turbine safety test. This test aimed to determine whether the reactor's cooling pumps could operate using residual turbine power during a blackout before backup generators came online. Minor delays and miscalculations caused the reactor to remain at dangerously low power for hours, allowing xenon gas to accumulate, a phenomenon known as xenon poisoning, which made the reactor extremely unstable. As midnight approached, operators made critical errors. They disabled automatic safety systems, withdrew most of the control rods, and attempted to run the test despite the instability. While these actions violated safety protocols, the operators believed they could manage the situation. In reality, they had no way of controlling the rapidly deteriorating conditions. At 1.23 a.m. on April 26th, the reactor's power suddenly shot up. In panic, the shift supervisor pressed the AZ-5 emergency shutdown button, which was supposed to make the reactor safe. Instead, the special control rods made things worse by pushing out coolant and increasing the reaction. Within seconds, a huge steam explosion blew the 1,000-ton reactor lid into the air. A second blast followed, tearing the core apart. Flames shot into the night sky, and burning pieces of fuel and graphite rained down onto the nearby Unit 3 building. Because there was no protective structure around the reactor, radioactive materials escaped straight into the air. The resulting fire burned for 10 days, releasing radioactive contamination at levels estimated to be 400 times that of the Hiroshima bomb. What should have been a simple safety test became a global nightmare, leaving Europe exposed to a deadly radioactive cloud and forever altering public perception of nuclear power. Is this a self-sabotage or just a failed testing? No one could know. Inside the plant, confusion and chaos reigned. At least one worker, Valery Kodemchuk, died instantly in the explosion, his body never recovered. Another worker died soon after from severe injuries. 
fires broke out across the reactor building, but some officials initially underestimated the scale of the disaster, believing it to be a routine electrical fire. Within minutes, firefighters from Pripyat arrived at the scene. Unaware of the deadly radiation saturating the air and equipped only with standard gear, they climbed ladders to the blazing rooftops and sprayed water onto the burning structures. They worked through the night, unaware that each minute in that environment was delivering a lethal dose. By early morning, around 5 a.m., the roof fires had largely been extinguished, preventing the flames from spreading to nearby reactor units and storage facilities, a critical action that helped avert an even greater catastrophe. However, fires inside the destroyed reactor continued to burn for much longer. Their heroism came at a terrible cost. Many of the firefighters and plant workers began showing severe radiation symptoms within hours. Vomiting, burns, and sudden collapse. They were later flown to specialized hospitals in Moscow, but the doses they had received were far beyond what the body could survive. In the weeks that followed, 28 firefighters and plant workers died from acute radiation sickness. Their names are documented, and many are buried in Moscow's Mitinska Cemetery in zinc-lined coffins due to the radiation in their remains. Their bravery and sacrifice prevented the disaster from escalating even further. Yet Soviet authorities stayed silent, and residents of Pripyat continued their daily routines unaware of the invisible poison drifting through the air. This courageous response showed the strength of ordinary people in the face of a disaster few could fully comprehend. The radioactive cloud released by the explosion drifted across Europe, carried by prevailing winds. By April 28th, radiation alarms in Sweden, over 1,000 kilometers from Chernobyl, detected elevated radiation levels prompting international concern and forcing the USSR to admit that an accident had occurred. For 36 hours after the explosion, the residents of Pripyat were left completely unaware of the danger. Children played outside, families celebrated events like weddings, and people went about their normal routines, all while invisible, deadly radiation surrounded them. Evacuation orders only arrived on the afternoon of April 27th. Residents were told it would be temporary, lasting just a few days. Yet for many, it became permanent. The Soviet government's delayed admission and secrecy greatly worsened the disaster's effects. People continued to drink contaminated milk, touch radioactive dust, and eat local food, all while unaware of the invisible threat they faced. The lack of timely information magnified the human and environmental toll, making the consequences far worse than they might have been with proper warning and response. In the weeks following the disaster, the USSR mobilized over 500,000 people, soldiers, engineers, and volunteers known as the liquidators. They became the frontline defense against radiation, performing tasks that were often deadly. Helicopters flew directly over the burning reactor, dropping sand, lead, clay, and boron to smother the fire. Pilots risked lethal doses with every sortie. Remote-controlled robots failed to operate in the high radiation environment, so humans had to manually shovel radioactive debris from the reactor roofs in shifts lasting only 60 to 90 seconds before reaching dangerous exposure limits. Thousands participated in these missions, with many later suffering severe health consequences or death. Coal miners tunneled under the reactor to install emergency cooling systems, preventing a feared secondary steam explosion. Engineers worked in extreme heat and radiation to stabilize the ground, ensuring that molten fuel did not contact groundwater. By November 1986, the massive sarcophagus, made of concrete and steel, was completed to encase Reactor 4. Though imperfect, it contained much of the radiation and allowed the remaining reactors at Chernobyl to continue operations. Immediate evacuations removed roughly 116,000 residents from the 30-kilometer exclusion zone, with another 220,000 relocated later. Pripyat became a ghost town, frozen in time. Radiation exposure led to widespread health consequences, including a surge in thyroid cancer among children and other long-term illnesses. The Red Forest, heavily contaminated, stands as a reminder of environmental devastation. Though over decades, 
wildlife has slowly adapted in the absence of humans. The disaster prompted a worldwide re-evaluation of nuclear safety. RBMK reactors were retrofitted to correct design flaws, safety protocols were strengthened, and international cooperation increased, including the creation of the World Association of Nuclear Operators WANO. Trust in the Soviet government eroded, as Gorbachev later admitted that the accident revealed systemic flaws. Many historians cite Chernobyl as a factor contributing to the USSR's eventual collapse. Chernobyl was far more than an accident. It was a convergence of human error, engineering flaws, and extraordinary heroism. Lessons in safety, accountability, and humility were painfully learned. Today, the Chernobyl exclusion zone, the sarcophagus, and the stories of the liquidators serve as permanent reminders of the high cost of mistakes and secrecy. Even decades later, Chernobyl stands as a testament to the need for vigilance whenever humanity wields immense technological power. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, and join us as we uncover more stories where human ambition and error collide and learn the lessons that history has painfully taught.